Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And what many of you might not know is that I actually started my career in private equity real estate. For a long time, all I would do is buy rental properties and I thought that there were no better investments. But the idea of being able to buy a rental property with the bank's money and then having a tenant reimburse that mortgage for you was very compelling to me. You would earn cash flow along the way, there are significant tax advantages and within 20 to 30 years you will probably own the property free and clear it will have gained a lot of value also by then. That made rental properties a lot more appealing to me than stocks or bonds but despite that I actually don't buy any rental properties anymore today. As I learned more about REIT investing I became convinced that there are much better investments in most cases and that pushed me to become a REIT analyst and in today's video I'm gonna give you three reasons why I I think that REITs are far better investments than rental properties. So reason number one, REITs generate higher returns than rental properties in most cases. I used to think that it was the opposite, but there are actually lots of detailed studies made on this topic and typically the end result is that REITs generate two to four percent higher returns. I'll put some of those studies here on the screen so you can study them, you can pause if you want to look at them in more detail, but there are good reasons for this. But before I get into the reasons, uh, let me correct a few major misconceptions uh, so that you you're not suffering some uh, some biases here so misconception number one REITs are also leverage investments so so it's not just rental properties that enjoy the benefits of leverage when you buy shares of a REIT what you're essentially doing is you're providing the equity and then REITs take debt and add leverage on top of it so you enjoy the same benefits but it's even better here because you don't have to go to the bank yourself uh, to take on a mortgage uh, there is no need to do that because the REIT does it for you what you see traded on the stock market is the equity value not the total asset value then misconception number two the management of REITs is a lot more cost efficient uh, than that of rental properties a lot of rental property investors appear to think that REITs must be less rewarding because they pay millions to their managers and this is correct they pay handsome salaries to their managers but despite that they are still way more cost efficient because they have really large scale uh, REITs will commonly own hundreds or even thousands of properties and to give you the exam an example Realty Income owns uh, over 40 billion worth of real estate and so the, its management cost as a percentage of its rental income is extremely small it's far more cost efficient than if you did it yourself or if you outsource the management to a property manager then misconception number three uh, rental properties yes they are tax efficient but so are REITs so it's, again it's not a unique advantage of rental properties rental property investment are able to defer taxes really nicely with uh, depreciation as well as with 1031 exchanges but with free you're also able to defer most of the taxes into the future and this is because most of the returns coming from REITs are actually growth and appreciation and this is tax deferred and then on top of that the distribution is also quite tax efficient because you get a 20% deduction on it then on top of that a portion of the dividend is typically classified as return of capital which is tax deferred and then a portion of the cash flow is also retained by the rate so the payout ratio might be 60 to 70 percent so that 30 40 percent of the REIT retains also tax deferred and finally if you want to defer all taxes you may as well just hold your REITs in a tax deferred account and then the fourth misconception that I want to quickly correct here is that rental properties are not nearly as rewarding as many of you appear to believe I often see people claim that they earn 25 or even 30 percent annual returns with rental properties but let me remind you that Warren Buffett became the richest man on earth by compounding Berkshire Hathaway at just 20 percent annual return so I can guarantee you that rental property investors are not just casually outperforming uh, Warren Buffett uh, otherwise we would have a lot more rental property billionaires that what we currently have in reality what's happening here is that rental property investors are typically miscalculating their returns in two ways number one rental property investors will spend a lot of time and effort working on their property to generate this high return but then they will fail to deduct the management cost and they will assume simply that their time and work is worthless but that's not really realistic that's not how it works because if let's say you work 10 hours in a month on your rental property you could have just as well worked at 10 extra hours at your at your main job or at some 
other side hustle and if let's say one hour of your time is worth uh, $30 then 10 hours would be $300 that you should actually deduct from your return because otherwise it's not an investment return just a return that you get for your labor and so if you deduct the value of your time from the returns of your rental property then you'll see your returns already come down very drastically and then secondly where rental property investors will also miscalculate their returns is that they will just look at the very good years and then they will not consider the downturn so yes even REITs are able to earn 15 20 percent annual returns during the very good years during the bull market but what you really should do is look at the average returns over a full cycle including the downturn and if you do that then obviously what we see typically discussed the 25 to 30 percent total returns they typically drop down quite significantly closer to 10 to 15 percent but now that we've corrected this misconception so let's get back to what we we're discussing earlier so how are REITs able to generate these higher returns? There are actually a lot of reasons. I have some here on my computer. So number one, they have access to much cheaper capital. Number two, they also have access to more sources of capital. As an example, they can uh, issue some preferred equity. They can issue some convertible bonds on the public market. And having more options allows them to optimize their cost of capital and earn higher spreads. And then number three, they're able to hire the best talents in real estate. They can pay them handsomely because they have large scale and obviously having the best talent working for you is going to allow you to generate higher returns. Then number four, there are significant economies of scale, uh, not just in the management, but also in other expenses. Just imagine contacting uh, your contractor to change one carpet at your rental property versus a REIT working with the same contractor and changing thousands of carpets every year. Obviously, the REIT is going to get a much better quote than you. Then number five, REITs will often also develop their own properties, resulting in higher returns. Number six, they will often skip also brokerage and brokerage fees by doing sales and leaseback transactions directly with their tenants. Then number seven, REITs are able to grow externally by raising capital in the public market and then buying more properties with it. As long as their, their cost of capital is lower than the expected returns of their properties, there is a positive spread that allows them to grow faster than what they would could achieve simply by hiking their rents. And so that's how realty income, as an example, was able to grow its cash flow per share by nearly 10% last year, even as its properties only hiked their rents by 1%. Then number eight, REIT investors are going to be able to skip transaction costs as well because you're not buying an entire port property that typically will come with five to ten percent transaction fees and diverse costs but here you're buying an interest in a pre-existing portfolio and most brokers are just going to charge you a few dollars or even that and then number nine rates will often be priced at large discounts to the net asset value so this is essentially like buying real estate at a discounted price and there are many other reasons but in a nutshell this explains why rates have historically generated two to four percent higher returns for their shareholders than uh, what you would typically earn by buying private properties. To give you again an example here to conclude with this topic, Realty Income has managed to generate 15% annual return since going public in 1994. And that's despite just buying class A net lease properties and using very little leverage. Its loan to value is only around 30%. In the private market, if you bought similar properties with similar level of leverage, uh, your returns would have probably been closer to 8 to 12%, so materially lower than those of realty income. Then reason number two why I prefer REITs over rental properties is that they are a lot safer in most cases. A rental property is an illiquid, concentrated, highly leveraged investment with some significant liability risk as well as a social element. REITs on the other hand are public, liquid, moderately leveraged investments with professional management and limited liability. So clearly REITs are far safer investments. Um, I often see rental property investors claim that REITs are riskier because they trade like stocks which can lead to some volatility at times but I strongly disagree. I think that rental property is actually far more volatile than REITs and you simply just don't know about it uh, but if you had a daily quote for your rental property you would realize that its value is extremely volatile because again here you need to remember that what you see traded on the stock market is the equity value of REITs. So, 
it's essentially your down payment. Now let's say you bought a rental property with an 80% loan to value, so you put 20% equity, and now you try to sell your property, you're gonna get different offers. If you get a 5% lower offer, that means that your equity is gonna drop by 25%. So if you had a daily quote for your rental property, it's, it's value, you would get different offers all the time and its value would be extremely volatile. And this is especially true since it's an illiquid concentrated investment with liability risk. It's also capex intensive. Let's say you have a leaking roof and causes some damage. Again, because you're so leveraged, you would see a very significant dip in its value overnight. You can of course recover from it, but same applies to rates. And so I don't agree, not just because you don't have access to this information and the property is illiquid doesn't mean that its value is not is less volatile. On the contrary, I think that its value would be is far more volatile. And then on top of that, you have the other risk that I mentioned earlier. And then the third reason why I prefer REITs over rental properties, I think this one is highly uh, underappreciated. Is it is that REITs will actually allow you to focus on your career and it will also help you improve your lifestyle. I think that a lot of people get Get stuck up trying to optimize their returns, trying to get that one extra percent, but they forget that their career is their main income source and so their main wealth generator. If you're able to advance in your career and push for the next promotion and get that pay raise, that's going to have a far larger impact for you in the long run than getting an extra half a percent of return. And the reason why I like REITs here is because with REITs, you have professional management, you can make your investment and forget about it and focus then on your career and really make sure that you, you advance as fast as possible. And it also allows you to have complete geographic freedom. So if let's say you live in Dallas and you get a great offer to go work in Miami with a pay raise, but you, you can go there if you want to. You're not stuck in Dallas because you own a lot of properties there. And that's really the issue with rental properties that a lot of people forget here is that it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and all that time and energy is then taken away from your career, which is again far more important important for you for the long run to, to, to increase your income and increase your wealth. And so I think that owning a bunch of rental properties may actually lower your chances of getting that next promotion because you're not going to be as focused. And then secondly, uh, this also applies to your lifestyle. I mean, if, if you own REITs, you can, you can travel the world, you have complete uh, location freedom, uh, you're not going to get calls in the middle of the night. Uh, let's not forget that life is not just about money. So all this stuff matters as well. Uh, with rental properties, you're going to be far more stressed out you're gonna have uh, like I said calls at times when you would rather spend time with your family or do whatever else that you're more passionate about and so I think that it's it's far better if, if you give me two options uh, earning 11% return with a REIT or 13% with a rental property I would take the REIT because you're gonna be able to focus on your career you're gonna be able to optimize your lifestyle and you retain location freedom and so to conclude here, I think that REITs are more rewarding in most cases. I also think that they are far safer in most cases. And then on top of that, once you take into account that you can focus on your career and improve your lifestyle, I think that it's no brainer that uh, REITs are better investments than rental properties in most cases. Again, there are a lot of misconceptions on the topic of REITs and this is why a lot of people end up then buying rental properties. And it's difficult to convince those people then later on that perhaps they could have done better by investing REITs because now they, they are strongly biased. They've already put a lot of time and effort into buying those properties. And, and to be clear, it doesn't mean that rental properties are bad investments. I've made some myself. But again, I think that if you have the choice today, uh, in most cases, you will do much better investing in REITs. That's all I had. Thank you very much for sticking till the end. If you want to learn more about what REITs I'm buying today, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, Hire Landlord, for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And otherwise, if you could please like this video. Thank you very much. See you at my next one. Bye.